for joining us today for the second in this new series of Tune Into Tourism webinars, all devoted to wellness tourism. Now, last week we asked and hopefully answered the question, what is wellness? But this week we are going to be looking at the restorative, relaxing side of wellness tourism. Now, if you missed last week's webinar, don't worry, you can actually catch up by going to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash HIE communications. And if you look for the Tune to Tourism 2019 playlist, you'll find the full webinar on there. It was a really great session. We had Chris Greenwood from Visit Scotland. We had Joan Kev Buchan from Strength and Soul. And we really got into lots of great information there about uh, who the wellness tourist is, what they're looking for, and some ideas for your business. Now, today, as I said, Recharge, restore, renew. That's what we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at how the guests are looking to restore their bodies and also through retreat or through food and drink. Uh, we've got lots to talk about today. So, uh, first of all, we've got two fantastic guests. I'm delighted to be joined by Scott Fraser, who is a senior trends analyst for the food people. Yep. Scott, this is a massive trend within the food industry, isn't it? Wellness. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Julie. Yeah, we, we see food uh, and drink wellness as one of our mega trends. We have five mega trends and health, wellness, well-being through food is definitely one of our top five. Fantastic. And there's so much to talk about. I'm really looking yeah. forward to getting into it. You might have seen uh, Scott's little short film mm -hmm. we did uh, a couple of weeks ago, which has been up on the social channels. So there's some information already up there. And we've also got Katrina Mather from the Body Toolkit. Thank you for joining us today, Thank Katrina. Um, we heard a little bit from you in last week's webinar, mm -hmm. but we've got you in the flesh today. I'm delighted uh, <laughs> to, to see that. Now, your business, um, the Body Toolkit, tell us a little bit about what you do. I run the Body Toolkit Retreats um, where I take groups of, sort of 10 to 12 people for a week's course of detoxing, so I'm using juicing and soups, um, gentle exercise, nice walks, a bit of yoga and um, lots of relaxation. Excellent. Well, that is exactly what we are talking about today. But we want you to get as much out of this session as possible. We want you to join in, share your successes. We've got the chat box feature, which is just there on the right of the screen. Um, and producer Richard is going to be manning that box. Now, I'm delighted to say, actually, in today's webinar, we are going to be sharing a vlog uh, from Angela and Isabel from Above and Beyond Tours up in Caithness. Angela and Isabel were part of the webinar last week. They were a very active part of our chat box community. Um, um, and they've shared a vlog which we're going to be seeing later really shows how their business is perfectly placed to tap into this wellness trend so uh, we are looking for more vlogs aren't we Richard? We certainly are Julia <clears throat> and thanks very much to everybody for getting in touch um, last week and the video diary I'm looking forward to seeing that again I've already had a little sneak peek of it but it'd be good to get some more so do please get in touch and last week was just so helpful everybody who could share your ideas if you've got any best practices that you've been doing or anything that you want to um, uh, anyone, anything that you want to share with the community that is watching here in the chat box community um, we do have um, Angela with us from above and beyond in Kate Ness watching so that is who we're going to be hearing from her and Isabel later so keep watching Angela to see um, to see that Catherine good morning um, sorry for being slightly late at the start thanks for your patience we're here in the end and um, Sean is just making sure all the sound issues that anybody's been experiencing are all sorted um, so yeah Marie's watching Catherine's watching who else have we got Robin's watching um, uh, do keep in touch do send us any questions any questions you've got I will get them over to Julia and she will be able to discuss with the panel and anything else that you want to share. But for now, back over to you, Julia. Thanks very much, Richard. Now, Katrina, let's start with you. What does wellness mean to you? Wellness, well, I, I kind of find the term wellness has been a bit overused and it's kind of starting to lose its meaning. But in essence, it really means health. Um, and, you, you know, I, I think we're, 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 that's becoming, we're sort of craving wellness and health and these kinds of activities, activities that make us feel good, I think, because we're becoming so over familiar with um, modern life, the pace of modern life and how bad we're feeling, you know, stress and, and so on. So, yeah, wellness for me is activities that make you feel good either mm -hmm. physically, emotionally or, or spiritually. Mm -hmm. And as we said last week, that encompasses every aspect of how we live our lives really, doesn't it? 100%. And what we're talking about today, recharge, restore, renew, that's really a neglected side, isn't it, of our, of our own personal health? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we're, we're so needing it. I think many of us are being pushed into uh, being forced into taking time out and, and recharging. But actually, it's, it's, it's a sort of human necessity to take time out. Um, you know, even the concept of retreats has been a sort of historical thing for, you know, hundreds and well, hundreds and hundreds of years taking time out and it's not necessarily going on a retreat but taking time out in our daily lives is so, so important. Mm -hmm. Now, um, just like our guest last week, Joan Kev Buckham from Strength and Soul, you started the business because of your own personal journey. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think my sort of interest in wellness was a sort of selfish quest to, to look for solutions to my own health issues. Um, and I had a whole host of digestive issues and skin problems and, and anxiety and depression were a part of my picture. Um, and basically I sort of started looking for things and dabbling in this wellness industry and I came up with, well I was quite lucky that I found a few tools and one of them is the juicing that I now use with my retreats and um, I really wanted to create a platform to be able to share the tools that had really helped me so juicing is the foundation of the retreats but through the week I'm sharing these um, little tools to be able to help others. Um, and five years down the line, it seems to be working. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell us about the business. I think we can maybe see some pictures of, of where you are and what, what you, you do. Yeah. So where, whereabouts are you based? I use two locations. I use rented accommodation. I'm on the west coast, um, Scottish Highlands in Arasig House, right on the coast, um, during the sort of winter months. And then in the summertime, sort of April, April to September, I'm in Glenshee at Cray House. Um, so an, another fabulous location just on the Cairngorms um, and so w how the business looks like as I say you know I bring people up for a group of 10 up for a week they ditch the solid food for a week um, and just have my reportedly delicious juices and soups <laughs> throughout, throughout the course of that and we do really gentle exercise it's not at all a boot camp but it's really about recharging mm -hmm. but being out in nature is so good for you mm -hmm. um, so yes yeah, nice walks gentle yoga and coaching on ways to manage stress to, to reduce stress and ultimately in essence for me wellness is being the best version of ourselves and that's that's the core message of, of my retreats it's not being healthy for healthy sake it's being the best us yeah. yeah, and it's as you said, it's sort of rest with a capital R. That's a really important part of it, isn't it? Totally. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, you know, I find that in deepest, darkest November, January, when I'm running retreats and the weather's quite horrendous and you've got horizontal hailstones and <laughs> it's not not the nicest weather out there, but actually that is magical because I get better results with people because it gives them permission to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of my kind of ethos and, and, and the feedback is really encouraging because I give permission to to rest, I give them permission to do nothing and I think we're all needing that. The pace of life we feel we've got to keep up, got to keep up, but actually being told no please sit on your bum and, mm -hmm. and read a book or rest by the fire is, is so curative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Scott, the, the juicing side of things, obviously this is a detox, it's not something that you would do you know, every no. day but for, for a week. Is that something that you see as a, a, a trend as well? In, in, yeah, in yeah. Um, well, firstly, where do I sign up by the way? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just incredible. want to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Fire book, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah juices uh, are, are huge, huge. We, we are constantly seeing new launches of juices happening all the time. Every every week we, we uh, are seeing functional juices, we're seeing juices with added extras coming through, so absolutely you're, you're bang on trend on looking trend. at juices. Bang on trend, we yeah. love that. <laughs> um, so how did you get started in terms of finding those beautiful locations? Because that's something, there's going to be some businesses that are, are taking part in today's session who maybe could find themselves becoming a location for a retreat and could work, collaborate with somebody like you. How did you How did you find those, those locations? Well it started, so I've I've used a few locations up until now, but really the criteria are having enough bedrooms so that I'm bringing a group of 10 and, and where possible everyone likes to have their own, own room, so that kind of thing. And um, But the, the location has to be beautiful. I want people immersed in nature, breathtaking scenery, because that just so instantly transfers people into the present moment. Um, you know, being in Ar near Arasig House, you've got the stunning coastline, watching sunsets, watching sunrises, you know, 
know, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, and so, you know, the nature is, is key and then you want it nice and warm and cosy because putting people in, on a, a week of juicing, um, you want them to be comfortable and, 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 and so on. And uh, log fires are an essential part of it as well. You don't just do juices, do you? You do have one... One more meal. meal. <laughs> it's not. It's still kind of a kind of a juice, isn't it? I yeah, mean, totally. Yeah, soup, right? soups yeah. in the evening. Yeah. Soups in the evening. I mean, it sounds terribly punishing, but I would say ninety-eight percent of folk actually aren't hungry during the week, and most of us nowadays are actually overfed but undernourished. We're not getting enough raw. Um, stuff. So the, the juices, is, I mean, it sounds very fatty, but it's actually a powerful way to rest the digestion for, for a week whilst keeping the blood sugar nice and steady and, and so on. And, and yes, it is very niche, um, but the results people get from conserving that digestive energy over the course of a week are really quite staggering. You know, I have people with pain disorders, you know, l losing the pain or um, depression, lifting, digestive, digestive issues, um, improving, sleep issues improving. So it's powerful. And is that what they're looking for then when they're, when they're finding you? How, how are your clients finding you online? What are they searching for? What are they looking for? Well, I, I think now they are looking for the detox retreat because that is now sort of something in our vocabulary whereas up until when I started in five years ago the word retreat was still slightly synonymous with religious retreat yeah and um, so that's been a huge shift for, for, for me um, but yeah people are largely motivated by you know some kind of health condition some some kind of issue, sleep or menopause um, you know perhaps a, a weight issue a weight goal um, or just they're stressed out burnt out and they just want a reset and a lot of my clients are talking about this being a kickstart a reset a recharge and um, it really is wiping the sleep clean that when they go home they have a bit of distance between them and the wine bottle or them and the chocolate or whatever it is mm -hmm. um, it just is that that boost so I, I think they know what they're looking for mm -hmm. so in terms of the opportunity I think for businesses that, that might be watching it's actually you, you don't necessarily need to be providing an awful lot this is not adding an awful lot on to what you already have it's actually just ch shifting how you sell it and maybe collaborating a little bit with with a with a wellness practitioner whatever yeah. that might be yeah no 100 percent 100 percent you know you, your local massage therapist um you're curating a lovely list of your favorite local walks i mean a lot of my clients love the fact that um, not only am I doing the wellness bit and really coaching on that, but I'm also an expert on the local area and I take them on little hidden gems and everything and the nature thing, we, we, we are so blessed in Scotland and we know that, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't overly appreciate what, what we have in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, these little tiny tweaks and, and you know, pointing them in, in the direction of good local produce and what have you, I mean, it's it's easy yeah it's easy. So, so it doesn't necessarily need to be something that is branded as a retreat it mm. could just be adding and we talked last week about the primary and secondary wellness tours what you what you sort of are dealing with is probably primary people mm -hmm. are coming to do specifically for a wellness activity but the the secondary wellness uh, tourist is people who are just away on a break who may be looking to bring in some of these aspects of you know healthy living or you know a little bit of a break some relaxation and and Scott that's where the the food comes in as well yeah. of course if you're not going away to do the juicing and rest your digestion, you still want to be thinking about your what you're putting into your body. Absolutely. One of the major trends that we see is this, this joined up body, this, this holistic approach to health. So that can be, like you say, walking, but also it's about your gut health. It's about maybe the food that you enjoy, the food that you feel uh, an emotional response to. There's definitely a, a correlation between what we eat and how we feel. And we're seeing that across everything from new product launches, we're seeing that from menu trends, we're seeing it through just the dishes that are being produced mm -hmm. in, in, in restaurants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how, how could a business then tap into that in mm -hmm. terms of what they're putting on their menu, particularly at this time mm -hmm. of year in the winter? Well, you talked an awful lot about sort of nutritionally dense stuff, which I think is really important. And one of the most nutritionally dense foods we have are is plants and, and plant-based eating. So mm -hmm. it could be, you know, a soup. Soups are probably the most restorative foods there are. The, the very first restaurant that was ever uh, in the Western Western world in in Paris was served soup, and it was restorative. A restaurant restorative. Uh, so mm -hmm. soups are really good. You know, um, rainbow salads, plant-based salads, anything with lots and uh, lots of nutritionally dense food in it. And what do I mean by something that's nutritionally dense? We're seeing a lot of food that um, has a lot of vitamins, minerals, but not very many calories. So vegetables absolutely fit that bill. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I'm liking the sound of this as much. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, Kevin Joe said that I keep macaroni cheese, Scott. Oh, well, um, I'm not so keen on your. Well, there approach. is that part where it's nostalgia and <laughs> feeling good about your food. You know, uh, absolutely, macaroni cheese can go a lot, a, lot, a long way to make you feel feel better about yourself. But there's definitely two prongs. There's the. Mm. The emotional and nostalgic response to to food, but then there's the the actual physiological uh, uh, feeling better through food through things like the vagus nerve and uh, gut health, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess it's trying to find that balance, isn't it? Because somebody like me, and I imagine I'm fairly you know representative, mm -hmm. is I, I really do want to take care of my health. I mm -hmm. really do want to nourish my body, but at the same time, especially when I'm on holiday, I want to eat stuff that's sort of delicious mm -hmm. and you know warming makes me feel good. So it's trying to find something that fits into both of those. It was, we, we, like I said, we have sort of five mega trends. One of the major mega trends, like I said, was health and well-being mm -hmm. and restorative and, and feeling better about yourself. There is another mega trend we have, which is about indulgence. But since we're talking about restoring, <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it yeah. back, but um, there are points where you can do both, and we are seeing a, uh, an awful lot of products coming out there that give you. Um, indulgence but with a, a health halo mm. so reduced uh, fat ice creams reduced calorie ice creams uh, biscuits uh, chocolate these sort of products are out there and you can produce uh, brownies with vegetables through them you know mm -hmm. carrots or, or beetroot through them mm -hmm. and actually they taste brilliant you may sort of scoff at a beetroot and chocolate brownie but you're getting a, a certainly restorative effect from the, the fiber and the beetroot and all and all of the nutrients as well so you can have a bit of both i think mm -hmm. Um, Richard, how are we looking in the chat room? Who's, who's joining us today? Well, we've got lots of interesting people joining us. We've got Jane. Good morning, Jane Slaughter in the Pinewood Steading, high up in the hills somewhere near Bewley and somewhere else, but I'm not going to attempt pronunciation. Um, and, and we've just been joined by Joanne Stewart um, from Serenity, Scotland. Um, so uh, Joanne does pri uh, sort of bespoke t uh, tours. So I've just been looking that up, and it's a sort of creative, um, uh, a sort of community education type tour. So, and Joanne seems very interesting. I was just having a little Google, at, like meaningful travel. So it seems like something that's very sort of on brand uh, uh, for uh, wellness. So Joanne, yes, and she's a, her client. She says already into walking and eating, um, and listen to feedback for po for stress busting holidays. Because I was just asking if Joanne, with a business name like Serenity Scotland, if she had seen an increase in sort of people with an interest or a knowledge about wellness from the visitors who are coming to Scotland and she said yes she certainly has so um, that's very interesting thanks for feeding back to us Joanne maybe it'd be here interesting to hear a bit more um, from you and something like one of our video diary pieces that we do that I think Julia's going to introduce a bit later but do keep getting in touch um, and um, if you've got any questions or anything like that that you'd like me to put to the to the panel do that um, Angela and Robin are both up in Kenet, Caithness um, and Robin says that she's um, uh, from Robbie Mac Tours and um, she's doing a refurb on their self-catered accommodation that will be open for summer. Nice plug. Um, and she's um, trying to get Caithness on the map, which is exactly um, what Angela and team are doing as well. So hopefully they're going to team up and have a little chat and see if they could do something together, which would be an idea. One of the things we're talking about of wellness is being able to offer different elements of that journey to visitors who come to your area. So the chat box serving its purpose today, Julia. Thank you very much, Richard, and hello to all of you watching. Well, uh, Scott, as we were saying, you know, the wellness, when it comes to wellness, food and drink obviously plays a massive part. And under that banner, there's various different um, sort of sub-trends that we mm -hmm. can look at. And one of them I thought was quite interesting, especially as so we've just come out of staying sober for October, but some of us <laughs> did, um, this low and no alcohol trend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this trend of, 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 of wellness, um, it's because a lot of... Uh, our lives are so, uh, so under the spotlight now where we're finding everything about ourselves through Fitbits and apps telling us what to do and we're starting to realise that the one asset that we have is our body and we don't want to kind of throw it away and, 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 and it, let it sort of perish. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of people and especially millennials uh, driving a low and no alcohol agenda. They're wanting to drink less. Uh, and they are drinking less. We're seeing stats on, on people drinking a lot less alcohol. Yeah, I've seen the statistic that 30% mm. of young people yeah. aged, what is it, 16 to 24, I mm -hmm. think it is, are not drinking at all. Absolutely. It's quite mm. possibly one of the hottest trends at the moment. Mm. The, the drinks launches we're seeing, we're seeing everything from what, uh, drinks that, that 
mirror alcoholic drinks, so no, no alcohol wine, through to beer, through to gin, through to uh, I think Celtic Soul we were talking about. Which is and, like a whiskey uh, substitute. Which is like a whiskey yeah. substitute, which yeah. is amazing. And, and they're almost like an elixir. Uh, people want to drink things that make them feel better and, f and, and not, through, not just through your mind, but through your body too. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing is really interesting dries and soft drinks uh, and soft drinks with low sugar and often a, a soft drink with maybe a bitter taste as well, a more sort of grown up bitter taste mm -hmm. and that is, that is pervasive through industry. Finally, we're seeing a, par uh, a parity happening between no alcohol, uh, alcoholic drinks and non-alcoholic drinks in bars in London and in New York and Singapore and, and the, the, the big culinary centres, we're seeing drinks uh, menus with no alcohol sitting alongside cocktail menus that have alcohol on them. Uh, import, importantly, they're not called mocktails anymore. The sort of industry have turned around and said, we don't want to call them mocktails anymore because it has a sort of derogatory uh, connotation. So they're called spirit free drinks. Right. And we're seeing them on the same page at the same level in, in restaurants. Are they being bought at the same rate though? Well, we talked about <laughs> the trends, not necessarily the sales, mm -hmm. but I, I, you just said 30% of people are, are drinking less. So mm -hmm. And that's young people, and so who are their future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and restaurants aren't stupid, you know, about market. They're, they don't blindly follow the trends. They're doing something that, that customers have asked for. It makes business sense. The London Cocktail Week recently had a, a full day uh, dedicated to no alcohol drinks. So, so it's, it shows the, the, the level of it. So of that's really thing. something to think about then. Mm. If, you, if you are offering, I mean, everyone's got to drink, yeah. but that's something to think about, you know, what your options are. Yes. You know, whether you're um, spirit-free, I was going to say mocktail, spirit-free uh -huh. drinks uh, <laughs> might go beyond just a Shirley Temple, might exactly, be something yeah. a wee bit more sophisticated and looking into options of, of what you could have bring in their substitutes. Absolutely, so it could be everything from your aperitif, so you could, you could uh, buy uh, some of the amazing aperitifs that are on the market at the moment, Seedlip and um, uh, are one of the major ones, right the way to the nightcap. You know, mm -hmm. for, we were talking about wellness as being a holistic approach and sleep is probably one of the most important parts of Absolutely. restoring yourselves. So we're seeing uh, you can add herbal teas to that, you know, warm milk, warm soy milk for, for the plant-based, uh, or, or even oat milk would probably be more uh, Scottish appropriate. Yes. As a, and oats do have that calming, calming effect as well, so you could have that as your, your, uh, your alcohol-free nightcap. For right, example. promoting sleep. In promoting sleep. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. um, and what about you? You touched on the sort of plant-based side of things, mm -hmm. and sort of the, there has been this massive trend towards you know veganism. Whether yes. you know you like it or not, it is something to really be thinking about, isn't it? And providing options for for vegans beyond just you know a salad and a uh, <laughs> you know a token. I, yeah, it, it's undeniably one of one of the, the biggest trends at the moment: veganism and and or, or more of a plant-based diet. I think mm -hmm. things are moving beyond just people saying they're, they're vegan, uh, that, that fun word flexitarianism, I was doing a bit of research last night, we first reported on that you know, 10, 12 years ago, that was when flex, flexible, being a flexitarian, so someone who's vegan during the week and, and not at the weekend came into being. So it is the biggest uh, uh, openings that we see across uh, restaurants at the moment is plant-based, and, and zero waste and sustainability, they're the three big things that we're seeing in hospitality currently in, in some of the big, big centres. Mm -hmm. And it's all to do with maybe having a lesser impact on the environment. Um, we have to be a little bit careful in Scotland because we have got such a great meat industry and the meat that we produce is sustainable and it's really good. We have loads of pasture and, and a great ruminant uh, farming structure. So I still think we should be serving lamb and beef and these wonderful things. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but again, it's about how we sell that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah, exactly. So we're selling that and we're talking about locally sourced mm -hmm. and, and selling the story. That was another thing that you, you talked about. We, we see the, and it's that, that wellness, holistic, rounded, rounded piece again. If people know the story, they're much more willing to buy into it. I was speaking to the, the um, chef up at, at Inver and they're an amazing restaurant on the mm -hmm. West Coast and, and she's such a nice, nice, uh, nice uh, person to chat to and she knows all of her suppliers by name. In fact, they all have become friends and she puts these stories onto her menu. And it mm. means that the, the, the customer buys into the, the story, the, they buy into everything that that, that that experience entails, which in effect makes you feel 
better about what you're eating, what you're experiencing and, and the, the joy of the experience. Well, that is a big part of wellness too. It's about mm. building relationships and about feeling mm. connected. And Katrina, that must be a part of, of what you're doing as well. Obviously, food side, not so much. But um, I mean, nutrition being a big part of it, but being connected to each other and being connected to, to nature. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Interestingly, you know, I get all my veg delivered from McLeod Organics in Inverness and when I when I share that story, you know, people are even more bought into where it's coming from and, and, and so on. But yeah, absolutely. I, I think I think the root cause of a lot of our problems right now is that we are disconnected from from the environment, from where our food comes from, each other, from our own bodies, you know, um, and, and actually the, the diet, I mean, the veganism is huge, then, but there's also the paleo and the ketogenic and, and all this, and actually I don't recommend any diet for, for people. What I'm, what I'm encouraging them to do is drink more water, eat more veg, for sure, um, and then keep a food diary to try and reconnect with the body and, and listen for the feedback loops because so many people are actually, you might find gl gluten intolerant or dairy intolerant, which is a, I think a huge big trend I'm certainly seeing from my clients um, and, and started listening and reconnecting with the body and, and you know, and then the week with me is, is a fabulous opportunity to, to reconnect with nature and slow right down, be held captive for a week in one place and, and just be. Yeah. I totally agree with that. We see that an awful lot. And I'd add one more thing is add variety to her, to mm -hmm. your to, to what you eat. I think yeah. that, that having that variety in, in food can make you feel better in your own body and, and yeah, in your own mind as well. It's Not so easy because to get stuck in one oh, exactly, recipe yeah. rut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. especially when you have children, sometimes you're like, oh, what we're going to make for tea? And you just have sort of mm -hmm. three or four go-tos, you yeah. know, it's like, right, it's pasta or it's fish fingers <laughs> and potatoes yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. You can sort of get a wee bit stuck on, on eating okay. the same things sure. all the time. Well, listen, whilst we're talking about mm -hmm. connecting with nature and, and taking time to reflect, I think it might be a nice time to um, have a wee look at the vlog that we've got from Angela and Isabel um, from Above and Beyond Tours in Caithness. So let's have a wee look at what they've got to say about their offering. Isabel and Angela here from Above and Beyond Tours here up in beautiful Caithness. As you can see, we're on Dunnet Beach, one of our destinations for yeah. taking our tours. Um, a beautiful unspoilt beach, which is ideal for wellness, tourism, people wanting to switch off. What we really enjoy is the big skies of Keithness. Absolutely. Amazing big skies and nature walks. Yeah, and part of our tours is a grote bucky hunting. Don't know if you've heard of the elusive grote shell, but to do that on a beach like this, be mindful, be in the moment. Today's holidays shouldn't be about tick lists, it should be slowing down, appreciate being in the now, being at one with nature. And we both feel passionate, Keithness yeah. is ideal for this. And that's really why we started Above and Beyond Tours. Uh, we both love Keithness and we love everything about Keithness and the peacefulness. So hence we came up with this idea to do tours uh, for visitors and locals. Did you enjoy your tour today? Oh, fantastic, yeah. 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 Loved it, yeah. What, what do you love best about Keithness? Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's quiet. It's just, yeah, it's really picturesque and very quiet, really nice and peaceful. Perfect. So what brought you to Caithness? Um, we're currently doing the North Coast 500 and uh, we stopped off because the Caithness skies are beautiful. Yeah, just visiting the beautiful beach, just take a little wander. So, yeah. And are you enjoying the peace and tranquility of our county? Yeah, it's sort of nothing like home to be fair, it's so quiet. <laughs> yeah, that's correct, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. That's great. When we take them off the beaten track to some of Caithness's hidden gems, we get the big wow from people. We we want to continue to encourage wellness tourism and slow tourism. People just rush around and coming to Caithness, there's just a slow pace, a natural slow pace uh, in Caithness. about you but that makes me want to go for a little dance along the beach. Um, Richard, we're looking for more people to get in touch and send us their vlogs too, aren't we? We certainly are, Julia. Thank you. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Maybe we could go for a little dance along the beach together, Julia. That'd be nice. <laughs> so, I mean, we are open to any invitations to come and visit any of you. Um, uh, but 
what I just wanted to say was that Jane from Pinewood Steadings um, got in touch and she said, if you, you, she says she totally agrees with what the panel are talking about today. Um, and if you don't get behind the plant-based slash vegan movement, you will get left behind, um, which is interesting. And then also Joanne from Serenity Tours has chipped in with saying that there is delicious kefir and kombucha. Am I being wound up here? Um, uh, kefir and kombucha are being made in the borders. Um, so there you go. And then we've been joined by um, Angus McLeod, um, who said it's great to hear uh, uh, some from Inverness. Angus, you're up in Inverness. Nice to see you. Uh, great to uh, hear um, some ideas about how we can appeal to this interest in wellness. So thanks very much. Now, if there's anybody else watching who would like to sort of share with us what they're up to and what they're doing at the moment via one of those video diaries that we've just seen, then do get in touch with us. Pop some comments in the chat box um, and or get in touch with us and um, we'll track you down and we'll see what we can do for one of our future sessions. Uh, back to you for now, Julia. Thank you very much, Richard. And yes, Scott, this was something that we talked about as well, wasn't yeah. it? The, the kefir and the kombucha. Kombucha, yes. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> can you explain what that is and why that's important for wellness? Yeah, so I mean, kefir is a, is a fermented milk drink and kombucha is a, it's, it's a tea that's fermented using yeast and lactic acid uh, bacteria to create a sort of fizzy um, a drink that's, that's really good for your gut health. There's a few words I'll throw out there that we may or may not have heard. Microbiome, that's uh, a really big, big deal at the moment. I might have heard that in an advert on yeah, telly. I mean, they say that there's more, you have more bacteria <laughs> in your body than you have cells in your body. So, and, and this, the, there's loads of research out there, and it, we're right at the, 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 the start of it, but it's suggesting that your microbiome, and the, not just the, the size of it, but also the variety of it, can have a major impact on how you feel. And we're seeing this trending everywhere uh, and gut health it started off a little bit with a guy called Sander Katz who spurred the, the fermentation revolution and then another book called the um, the diet myth which which actively promoted uh, foods and a diet that would help your microbiome um, basically it's fermented stuff and stuff that's good so kombucha kefir sauerkraut um, some really good unpasteurised cheeses if you need to, they, they say that that's really good for your gut health. And it can help you not with your mood, but also, you know, blood pressure. They say it can help you with mental uh, health issues. It can help you with your cognitive ability, which is really important. It's dead easy to, to get into as well. Uh, we're seeing products with things like prebiotics we've had and probiotics, which we might know a little bit more about. We're seeing uh, lots of products that promote gut health, which, um, pulses, uh, un unprocessed foods, uh, low nitrate foods, which can help your microbiome uh, get How going. How might that look on a menu then? What sort of things would we be putting on a menu to appeal to that under the banner and say, look, uh -huh. you know, if you're looking after your gut health, how about trying these options? What would they be? Well, at the high end, we see almost everything being fermented. And it can be, you can, you can say things like fermented, because I think people are much more are, are, are starting to be much more accepting of that on the menu. You can say pickled, because an awful lot of the, the fermentation, there's a, a, a type of fermentation, fermentation called lactic acid fermentation, and these are things like sauerkraut, pickles, and almost anything can be uh, fermented like, with lactic acid. I, a friend of mine picked some seps from the borders recently. Uh, the ama most amazing seps, uh, porcini mushrooms that you'll ever see and I fermented them with lactic acid bacteria. And the cool thing about them, and the amazing thing about this fermentation process, it doesn't just create a wellness and positive, healthy flavor, um, uh, bacteria, but it also creates flavor molecules. So it tastes even better. So you can, and we, we probably eat a lot of fermented foods that we don't even know about. So things like cheese is fermented, coffee is fermented, chocolate fermented, all these different okay, fermented now we're foods. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back on board. But, sorry, yeah. <laughs> are, are the sourdough bread? Thing? Sourdough bread, yeah. of course. That's the, yeah. one of the major ones that, that we're forgetting about. And okay. the really cool part about linking that back to the story is that all of these fermentations, or the majority of these, can happen spontaneously and naturally. So when you, I make my own sauerkraut at home, and we did in the restaurant, you have salt and cabbage, and that's it. You, you massage it so it goes, uh, so all the liquid comes out, and you leave it for a week, and you get, you get sauerkraut, or three weeks, you get sauerkraut. And you're anchoring yourself to a place, you're anchoring yourself to a geography, you're anchoring yourself to the place that that was made. Now, if you had made your sauerkraut 
in Inverness, it would taste different. So you mm. can really start tailoring that to your own own space, mm -hmm. which and makes that, that very exciting too. to sell the story. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh -huh. So Katrina, we saw there um, Isabella and Angela and Keith Ness and some of the guests there on the beach talking about the quiet, so quiet, so different, the skies, the view, the beach. You know, that's so important, isn't it? Is that one of the main things that people are taking away from their retreats with you, that sense of place? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think, you know, for me, it's, it's been interesting in the five years is that I've been attracting, um, well, 90% a female audience. It is a kind of women's kind of thing for, to come to, to my retreat specifically, although I would love to see a 50-50 split because we've all got bodies. I don't know why blokes aren't. <laughs> well, I'll um, help redress that. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll see you there next month. Um, but um, but yeah, what's lovely is when they come to the areas, they then leave talking about coming back with friends, family, loved ones, and, and, and they've fallen in love with the place. M much as I have, you know, I, I, I chose specifically the West Coast Highlands because I just feel it's so good for the soul to be there. And why is that? I mean, just being in that wild, dramatic scenery, it's it just immediately puts it puts you and your life and your issues into perspective, you know, the bigger hills, the wider sea, you know, just it's, hum skies. it's mm -hmm. humbling, the yeah. big skies, it's, it's just, um, and that sense of awe and appreciation you get when you watch the sunset, you know, that sense of sort of gratitude, I mean, that is the secret into joy and happiness and redressing the balance from the stress that many of us are, you know, we're all stressed, our kids are stressed, our grannies are stressed, you know, we're all feeling it, so the more we can get out into nature, I mean, and we're, this, this idea is being force fed to us, but it's so, so true. It, mm -hmm. it really is a huge takeaway from people and I think a lot of them go back and say, well, yes, I'm working Monday to Friday, but on a weekend, I'm going to get out into the park or get out to the hills if I can and mm -hmm. get to the beach. Mm. And so not to be in any way cynical, but perhaps if you your business sort of tries to bring in some kind of retreat element, then those customers may come back to you again with their with their families, you know, and uh, as you say, build a relationship that where they fall in love with, you know, the area and, and quite possibly your business as well. Yeah. 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 Um, where do you see, I mean, where do you see your business growing? What are your plans? What have you sort of learned? How are things changing as the, as the business evolves? Well, I think things have changed massively since I started, you know, the word detox, when you said detox, people thought you were talking about, you know, alcohol and drugs and stuff. So even, you know, detox retreats, people now know what I'm talking about. So that, that it's shifted and the wellness tourism thing is, is, is rising at an astronomic um, sort of rate. For me, you know, I, I would love to be doing more. I'm very conscious. I mean, the purpose of me doing this is to help people. Mm -hmm. um, it, my retreats are consistently described as life changing. And I, I'm very conscious I'm running one week once a month and um, I would love to be reaching more people. So I would love it to grow. Um, and w what that might look like, I'm not entirely sure. But um, but you know, Scotland, we've, it, it's this paradox. We've got all this nature and all this beauty, and yet we've got the lowest life expectancy in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I would love the tourism to be affecting, and you know, the ripple effects of, of the wellness tourism to be affecting our own, not just the lovely foreigners that we're welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my aspiration for it, really. Yeah. And Scott, where do you see this trend going? I mean, it's not going away, is it? This it's it's certainly not going away. Just on an aside. Something I was thinking yeah. of when you were chatting was mm. you're offering people time. You're offering people time to reflect and relax, and, yeah. and often the best food in the world has a bit of time spent on it. But um, the wellness trend is like a juggernaut, it is flying through. We're all focusing on ourselves so much that we're seeing two sort of main ways where uh, food is and wellness, certainly in, in retail, is, is and, and in food, is being driven. One, is by adding functional stuff. So we are seeing, and some of it might be snake oil, some of it might be a bit sort of crazy, but we're seeing things like MCTs, which are medium chain triglycerides. We're seeing CB, CBD, we're seeing um, adaptogens, we're seeing collagen, all these things being added to foods. Now, um, that's, that's one area that we're seeing an awful lot to, to drive wellness. Another area is technology. And it's horrible to say because actually, I think what we offer in Scotland in the tourism industries is trying to get away from that technology, but we're seeing an, an awful lot more tech-based solutions to, to your wellness. 
if there's a problem, there's a cause. If there's an ailment, there's a cure. If, there's, uh, if you have an issue, then there's an app to solve it. And we're seeing an awful, an awful lot of that happening. Mm -hmm. One more thing I wanted to talk about, which you had mentioned, which I think mm -hmm. is quite important and, and really ties into what Katrina was just saying, is actually the wellness of your staff. Yes. And creating an environment where, yeah. you know, where it's not just the customers who mm -hmm. are thinking about, are taking care, taking care of themselves, yes. but you're creating an environment where that is more positively, you know, embraced by everyone. Absolutely. There's a wonderful restaurateur called Danny Meyer who's got the, billion, tons of restaurants all over New York and has amazing stuff. And he says that his first, he's got four things that he focuses on as a, as a, a restaurateur. And the first one is staff. And then it's a produce community and then customer, because he says if you get the first three right, the last one takes care of itself. And I think in hospitality, we've been really bad at that. I mean, I was a chef for 20 years and it was certainly a pretty aggressive environment where I, I had worked in. Yeah. And we are seeing businesses take a much more uh, proactive approach into looking after their, their staff's mental wellness, whether it is just if you've got a problem, talk about it whether it is you know, four day weeks instead of you know, five day splits, whether it is, uh, and we're even seeing, uh, and it's a super simple way, it may sound a bit odd, but companies are bringing in yoga teachers, but are bringing meditation experts once a week and letting their staff have a, an actual session together. And that doesn't only help their individual mental health, it can help that group and team uh, um, dynamic as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's so much to think about, isn't there? Is, <laughs> I feel yeah, like yeah. we can talk forever. We are slightly running out of time. Uh, Katrina, just before we, we do wind things up, um, what would be the main um, sort of lesson that you've learned that you can maybe share with people watching in terms of what is it that, how, how do we really cater for these tourists? What is it that they're really looking for? What have you learned or been surprised by, you know, in your journey um, to this point? Yeah, there's quite a few lessons, Julia. Um, <laughs> but what would it be? I mean, the big thing for me is that how often do we go on holiday, come back from the holiday and say, oh my God, I need another holiday to recover from that holiday because I overindulged, had a great time, saw everyone in the family, but I'm absolutely knackered. And so the big thing for me is that people are craving the time out and it doesn't need to be a retreat. It can be, you know, a lovely self-catering cottage in the middle of nowhere and slowing down and actually looking after ourselves because the pace of life is catching up with us and, and a lot of us are struggling. So just making time is a biggie and getting the right nutrition. Sadly, in Scotland, being healthy and wellness has not been a cool topic for a long, long time. And I'm really hoping that these trends kind of wash over us as a nation. Mm -hmm. And actually, we start valuing our health. We start looking after ourselves. And the one little tidbit was that last year I started welcoming a whole swathe of Americans over. Um, and what's really interesting, I had an 82-year-old American lady fly from California to come to the retreat. Um, and I was like, you know, why are you doing that? But because they're having to pay for their health care, they value their health so much more. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my, my big thing is just valuing our health and valuing our energy levels and taking time out. Mm -hmm. And Scott, if, if, if uh, any of the businesses watching could do just one thing to tweak, um, to, to sort of try and appeal a bit more to that t wellness, market, wellness market, what would it be? I'm going, to, I'm going to be controversial and say there's two approaches, I think, that we, we certainly, in the food people, we cut uh, wellness and, and restorative food into uh, two, two ways. Stuff that you can add to make people feel better, so mm -hmm. pro probiotics and functional stuff and uh, you know, plant-based things, and stuff that you can take, that you should maybe try and avoid or take away that's maybe poisoning or destructive, so alcohol, processed food, nitrates. So it's almost approaching it in a two-pronged attack. What can you add to augment wellness and what can you take away, stress, all these things to try and to promote it. To promote it. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic, well, before we go, um, we'll just go one last time to our chat box community. Mm -hmm. Richard, what are the final thoughts there? Um, thank you very, thank you very much, Julia. Yeah, we've just, thanks to everybody today who's got involved. We're going to keep the chat box open for about another five, ten minutes after the broadcast has finished. So if anybody's got anything they want to add, um, then please do. And if anybody um, is, is up for doing another one of those little video diaries and sending us, then please do get in touch. But if you're watching on um, YouTube um, instead of live on the live stream, which I know quite a few of you do, and on the catch-up, then you can add in your details in the comments and we'll get in touch with us or try and get, uh, or else we will um, be in touch with you in some other way. Um, I was going to say 
that you know this all this stuff we're talking about is so interesting i mean i personally find it so interesting and like last week after uh, normally julia and i have been doing these and talking to you guys for quite a while and i'll be quite honest with you like normally when we finish one of these broadcasts and we sort of have a little chat about how it went we then tend to go out for a big lunch and several bottles of wine and um, <laughs> debrief the experience whereas last week we went and climbed a hill um, and took some deep breaths at the top of the hill and i think that was um vastly more positive so i am very much on board and very much enjoying talking about these trends and hearing from these absolutely fascinating people sharing their expertise with us. So thanks very much and thanks to you for watching and joining in, Julia. Thank you very much, Richard. I'm looking forward to our walk today. Um, so before we go, just a reminder, if you haven't already signed up for the rest of the series, um, we have got loads more interesting stuff to talk about. Next week, we're going to be harnessing the power of nature and the outdoors. We touched on that a bit today and, and last week, but we're really going to focus on that next week. Um, and then after that, we've got uh, sustainability we're talking about. Again, massive crossover in, in those markets. Accessible tourism, how do we make our wellness offerings accessible, and then events and festivals as well. So if you haven't signed up already if you only signed up for one session you can still go and do that www.hie.co.uk forward slash tinto short for tuna to tourism tinto uh, and if you want to get in touch with us about a vlog and you haven't done that in the chat box and um, you're watching this on youtube you can email us tune into tourism at hient.co.uk that's tune into tourism at hient.co.uk so for now, my, my thanks uh, once again to Katrina Mather from The Body Toolkit and also to Scott Fraser from The Food People. Um, loads, loads to think about. Thanks to you for watching. As Richard said, we're going to keep that chat room open uh, for a little bit longer. If you've still got stuff you want to share or if you want to get in touch with us about perhaps doing a vlog, please, please do that. And you can watch the full sessions if you want to catch up on last week or if you're not going to make the next one, they're always going to be there on the YouTube channel. That's HIE Communication and look for the Tune Into Tourism 2019 playlist. So keep an eye on our social media channels as well. We're going to be sharing some more short films uh, from some other wellness practitioners and other vlogs like Angela and Isabel's today. Um, and uh, for now, that's uh, just hope that you join us next week. I've been Julia. Thank you very much. Goodbye.